Happy Feast of Trumpets. I haven't uh, been on Facebook Live. I haven't posted any videos for quite a long time. But I was thinking about it today because today is the Feast of Trumpets. And um, it's a day while well, you're supposed to have some time of rest, but you're supposed to blow trumpets all day. And so let's see what that's all about. I want us to look up in the scripture. It's commanded in Leviticus 23. So let's look at Leviticus 23. Now I'm there. Let's go ahead and, and open in prayer. I really don't want this to be going on too terribly long, but I just wanted to, to um, send a word of encouragement and um, something to consider for this day. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this Feast of Trumpets to remember, to remember what you are doing in the earth, to remember that the King is coming and that you want us to be ready. Thank you and praise you for it. I pray that you'd be with my mouth, that I would speak only what you would have me speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so in Leviticus chapter 23, we're going to start with verses well, in verses 1 and 2, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. I read this several years ago, and it j just leaped out at me. It does, And I noticed it does not say the feasts of the Jews, or the feasts of the Israelites. <clears throat> it says the feasts of the Lord, and then the word that's translated feast means is moedim, and it actually means appointed times. So the the following that are going to be given in this chapter are God's appointments that he has set to meet with his people. Now, he's always available to listen to us, but there are special times that he's made appointments with us, and this is one of them. Now, if we jump over to verse <clears throat> 23. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm so phlegmy. <clears throat> it says, you shall count for... No, that's the wrong one. Verse 23. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And in Numbers, it describes the offering. Of course, we're not going to bring goats and lambs and those kind of things, rams or whatever. We're not going to be sacrificing animals. Jesus was the last sacrifice for sin. This, In this case, these weren't <laughs> sacrifices for sin. So <clears throat> in any case, in any case, this is a feast that's commanded. And it's commanded for the first day of the seventh month. The first day um, in the godly, in the biblical sacred calendar is the new moon. And they would have to have um, people watching for the new moon. As soon as they would see the first beginning sliver, then they would announce it and that would be celebrated. So no man knew the day or the hour, which is why on the calendar it looks like it's celebrated for two days because they didn't have any way of knowing exactly what day or hour that was going to come about. Okay, so that was just a little bit of an introduction to what this is about. Um, <clears throat> I have this book. I'm going to look at a couple, a little bit. I You're probably looking at it backwards, probably. Anyway, it says The Book of Mysteries by Jonathan Kahn. And this is a wonderful book. It has um, a single, single um, page, uh, like devotional kind of things. Um, opening up mysteries of words and passages and ideas that that are important for us as believers. <clears throat> and today's portion just turned out to be the Feast of Trumpets. And so it says we, um, it said to have a Sabbath rest. So, and it starts from sunset to sunset. So, and it says to have a holy convocation. So, we, we were actually at church last night because it was Wednesday night. And so we were convocating right there with our brothers and sisters and having a good time worshiping God together there. And then um, 
today we've had our time of rest. We went for a walk, we took a nap, and, and, and we've just been resting and reading the Bible together and stuff like that. <clears throat> but what is the point of the trumpets? Why is it a memorial of blowing of trumpets? So, um, <clears throat> The thought is we see all of the other, all of the other Moedim or feasts of the Lord mentioned in the New Testament, but this one isn't specifically said. And Jesus did the Feast of Tabernacles, but we, I mean, Feast of Trumpets, but we know he did because Jesus was a Jew. He grew up in Israel and he celebrated all of the feasts of the Lord with his family as a child. And as a rabbi leading his group as an adult, even if it doesn't specifically say so. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to just um, read part of this from here. Um, so what um, when in the I want you to just listen a little bit as I read this paragraph. When in the sacred Hebrew year does the Feast of Trumpets take place? So it's the seventh month. So that's the end. So we have the fall, the spring feast that happened in Nisan, uh, or March or April, depending on how the calendars coincide. And then we have the Feast of Pentecost in the summer, beginning of the summer. And now the fall feasts are beginning with this one. <clears throat> so it, it takes place near the end of the year. Okay. Um, so then this mystery also focuses on the closing of the age. Those, the Passover and unleavened bread, first fruits, coincided exactly with when Jesus died on the cross, spent time in the tomb, and rose from the dead, exactly to the day, to the minute. And then Pentecost also um, landed exactly on the day when, when the Holy Spirit fell. That wasn't a new Pentecost. That was celebrating the Pentecost that had been in place since since Leviticus. And, but they called it Shavuot in Hebrew and in, Pente in Greek it was Pentecost. And so, um, it's the same thing. Like if you say, Oh, well, in Mexico I celebrated Navidad, but now I'm celebrating Christmas. Well, it's nothing new. It's just in different languages. And so on that day that they were celebrating Shavuot or Pentecost, then that day is when the Holy Spirit fell and the birth of the church was inaugurated. So now, <clears throat> We're looking at the end of the age celebrated by the fall feasts. So um, what are some things that have to do with trumpets? So what do you find in scripture when you look at the prophecies concerning the end of the age? Lots of trumpets. The trumpet of Israel announced the coming of kings and kingdoms and the approaching of armies. So when they're going to go to war, they would, blow, they would be blowing the trumpet. <laughs> And, well, much better than that. And they have different tunes and different rhythms that they would blow it. But that's, I do good to just make a sound on it. So to announce that armies are coming or to announce a king. When um, the child Joash was set up as king, they blew the trumpets. <coughs> they sang songs. They rejoiced loudly. And the queen mother who was had usurped the throne heard it, found out that her grandson, um, Joash, seven years old, was being made king, and she had a fit, and she wound up getting killed, and he was set on the throne. But his reign was announced with trumpets. Okay. Um, it's also, prof so the trumpets of Israel announced the coming of kings, the approaching of armies, so it is prophesied that when the trumpet sounds, the kingdom of God will come. The trumpets called the people of Israel to gather before God. So when um, they blew certain tones, certain rhythms on, on the shofar or on the silver trumpets, they would be calling all of Israel to come and gather. And so trumpets are called, um, are going to be calling the people of God to be gathered up um, in, in uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 and in 1 Corinthians we have that idea. Um, First Thessalonians 4, 16. It says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with the Lord to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we'll always be with the Lord. 
So, <clears throat> far from being something that's only for Jews, this is for all of believers because all of us look forward to, di to the day that that trumpet sounds in the air and we are going to be gathered up as the people of God to meet the Lord in the air. Every born-again believer, be they Jewish or be they um, non-Jewish, we're all going to be gathered up. Um, those that have been born again, those that that um, have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of them. Okay, and then um, it's also for, told so that, um, yeah, I, I should have marked where I was reading. It's also, it is prophesied that the sound of the trumpet caused people to be gathered. So that would be the rapture. The sound of the trumpet was a wake-up call. So it foretold that when the trumpet sounded, the dead and Messiah would be awoken. And lastly, it was the sound of the trumpet that announced the beginning of a king's reign. So <clears throat> and we talked about that with Joash. But look at this in Revelation 11.15. Revelation 11.15 it's talking about the seven trumpet judgments. <clears throat> and it says, then the seventh angel sounded. In other words, he blew his, his trumpet. There were loud noises in heaven saying, loud voices, sorry. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Wow. So that... That is when he sets up his kingdom, the trumpets are sounding. We should be excited about that. That's what this, this, um, holy day, this Moedim, this feast of the Lord is pointing to. It remembers when, when God came on Mount Sinai and, and there was a lot of noise and trumpets, but it points, and that's when God came down to meet the people and Moses went up. But now we're pointing to the future when Jesus is going to come in the clouds. The trumpet of God will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. And then after that... <laughs> it's somebody calling me. Okay. Uh, I'll get back to her later because I hope we'll all be done soon with this. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Then Jesus is going to come down on earth and he's going to set up his kingdom and he's going to defeat all who have opposed him. And so that's a wonderful thing. So the king, this this holiday, this Feast of Trumpets tells us that the king is coming. King Jesus is coming. And there's an old song, the king is coming, the king is coming. Praise God, he's coming for me. An old Gaither song, a wonderful song. That we remember. But now here's the question. <clears throat> it's exciting to think that the king is coming. It's exciting to think the rapture could happen anytime. Though I believe it's going to happen on, on a feast of trumpets. Because Jesus fulfilled all of the others on the day that they were celebrated. So I believe it's going to be so this time as well. Um, but we don't know if it's this year, or next year, or some year on the feast of trumpets. And whichever day that is, we don't know. <clears throat> Then the um, the trump is going to sound, and we're going to be going up with him. So that's great news, and it's a great reason. But what if you're not ready? What? So the trumpets also warn of certain judgment, because the way the calendar goes is that the trumpets sound on the first, and then on the tenth we have the day of atonement. That's the day of judgment. And the Day of Atonement points back to um, uh, a time, you can read Leviticus 16, when they had two goats. One was sacrificed for the people. One was sent out to take the sins away from the people. It was done every year to get rid of the sins of the people. And then when Jesus died on the cross, that was once for all, and that covered the atonement. But it looks forward to that final judgment day when Jesus comes and he slays all of his enemies. <clears throat> so the feast of trumpets it warns of it it wakes us up to the fact that the king is coming but it's also a warning in case you're not ready to see the king 
So then it warns of certain judgment. In Joel 2, 1, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. We don't know when it's going to come. It could come any time. But the inhabitants of the land, that's you and me, what we need to know is, are we right with God? Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. That means eternal separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so um, <clears throat> we need to get right with God. Acts 17.30 says, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands, commands all men everywhere to repent. Some people say, well, we don't need to repent. We just need to believe. Well, repent is part of believing. Because if I believe that Jesus died on the cross and and he bore my sins, it should bring me to say, God, I am so sorry for my sins. Please forgive me and cause me to want to turn away. That's what repent is. Repent means I'm going this way. And I'm going to turn around and go that way. I'm going away from God and I'm going to go to God and I repent of my sins so the day of the Lord is the last judgment of those who have refused to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Messiah as a, as their Lord and Savior and so um, <clears throat> I want to know are you ready if you're not ready today is the time to repent to pray ask God to forgive you of your sins receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior recognizing he is the Messiah he is the Lamb of God who died to take away the sins of the world. And all we have to do is come to him in repentance, receive him as our Lord and Savior, and he will save us. His Holy Spirit will come and dwell inside of us. And then we will have a hunger and a desire to do the right thing because it says he will write his law in our hearts. That means he'll put a desire to be obedient to God and, uh, and an aversion to the things of the world. Psalm 97 10 says, you who love God hate evil. So that means if you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, you're going to hate doing anything evil. And that's what happens when you repent and come to Jesus. Let me pray with you right now. And then I want to wrap it up because I don't want to go on and on, which I can sometimes do. All right. Father, we thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to pray a prayer of repentance so that if you are wanting to do that and you need to do that, I pray that you will do it now. So you come and you can say something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I have rebelled against your word and your ways. I have chosen to do my own thing and I realize that that is sin and that will take me straight to hell. But I also recognize that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, is the Messiah. He died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sins. When he died, he said, it is finished. And so I need to recognize that I am a sinner and I believe that Jesus took and took my sin and paid the penalty so he can give me his righteousness. I receive, I believe that Jesus died for me. I receive him as my Lord and Savior right now. Father, I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may live for you and not for myself or for the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, whether long time ago or now, and you're walking with the Lord, then you are ready. So let's be ready to meet the King. God bless you. One oh, whoops. Went to reach for the horn and knocked over my glass of water. That's sad. Okay, that's better. Let's be ready. The King is coming. Love you guys. Bye.